and get yourself ready for our speaker this morning, practitioner Sandra Cooper. Now, in case you didn't realize it, today is Practitioner Sunday. So on Practitioner Sunday, we practitioners take charge. <laughs> we practice. <laughs> so please help me welcome Sandra Cooper to the podium. She is a well-seasoned speaker, a life facilitator, and just a wonderful person altogether. Welcome, Sandra. Thank you so much, Carol. Good morning, everyone. And welcome, welcome to the Temple of Light. Welcome to our Sunday morning service. Welcome to our hearts. And welcome to each and every one of you joining us on the World Wide Web. It's, it's awesome from where I stand now and I'm looking outside. I'm seeing Bougainvillea right around the temple grounds. And it just tells me that it's summer and it's just awesome. And, and I know that those of you who are in colder climes uh, can just imagine what it feels like to have Bougainvillea around. And, if, and it just will make a, a whole different experience in your, in your hearts as you feel a lot warmer. Now today, February 28th, marks the end of our love month. It's the end of reggae month here in Jamaica and black history month in the United States. We kicked off our first Sunday this month with Reverend John's message, expressions of love. On Friendship Sunday, Valentine's Day, the following week, Reverend Anne's message was in celebration of friendship. And last Sunday, Reverend John chose to focus on our own black history as he explored the rich heritage of the Nubian Empire, a time that was devoid of racism. In that message, he also shared the importance of holding oneself as valued and valuable, a message impressed upon him by his father as he was preparing to enter high school. Now this morning, I will share some thoughts on the experience of love in relationships in my message, which I've entitled, All Together in Love. Now friends, relationships exist to hasten our experience of oneness with God. And the Course of Miracles describes it this way, and I quote, when you meet someone, remember it's a holy encounter. As you see him, you will see yourself. As you treat him, you will treat yourself. Never forget this, for in him, you will lose and find yourself. End of quote. Now, everyone we meet, therefore, brings with them an opportunity for us to experience relationship. According to the Huffington Post, relationships are imperative for many different reasons, such as increasing our emotional well-being, creating stability, learning how to be a good friend or mate, having someone to count on and to trust in times of need. And so each relationship el elicits different responses in ourselves that help us to grow and learn about ourselves. Relationships then oftentimes are the glue that holds us together during stressful situations and when we face life's difficulties. Without relationships, we would have a dreaded spirit and a lack of connection to our true selves. End of that. Wow. wow. It is there yes, therefore, therefore through relationship, relationship that we have, we have the opportunity, opportunity to develop, develop and express, express virtues, virtues of generosity, of generosity compassion, compassion, patience, patience and forgiveness. In relationship, In relationship we can listen, we can listen without, without judgment, judgment, challenge one another, encourage one another, and pray with one another. Indeed, in relationship, there is always the acknowledgement that there is a divine exchange taking place, that the presence of God 
is experience itself through each person. And it is in relationship, friends, that we learn what love truly means. And I'm not talking about just the romantic relationship here, but all relationships. But, you know, sadly, relationships can also be a minefield of explosive entanglements, sparking conflict and energy-draining emotions like guilt and envy, jealousy, among others. And these emotions might, you know, will leave us with a deep sense of disconnect and separation from each other and from our source. Consider that when you are in relationship with another, that relationship has only one purpose. It exists as a vehicle for you to experience yourself, to decide and to declare, to create and to connect, to experience and to express yourself as love. Now, the science of mind teaches that love is the highest form of energy known to man. It expresses through qualities like beauty and joy, fun and laughter, passion and service. Our founder, Ernest Holmes, ex uh, expressed that, and I quote, love is a central flame of the universe. It is the very fire itself. Love fires the heart stimulates the, re the emotions, it renews the soul, and proclaims the spirit. It is a self-givingness of the spirit through creation, the impartation of the divine through man. God is pure love. And as we are made in the image and likeness of God, we too are pure love. The master teacher Jesus entreated us to love one another Yes, as I have loved you. Are we loving? Are we allowing that presence and spirit of love to express through us uninhibitedly, purely, and without compromise? The challenge is that as we navigate through this thing called life, Love, as we described above with the fire and all these wonderful things, seem to be a far-off utopic ideal. Instead, we have instances of blatant racism, bigotry, political divisiveness, and violence against each other, threatening to undermine our very existence. This is what we are hearing about on, on the media and reading about. So if there were a time when the world needed love, it's now, especially as we are grappling with the effects of a global pandemic. I was therefore quite delighted when I received a copy of Mungi Ngomani's beautiful book, Everyday Ubuntu. So let me tell you a little bit about Ubuntu, which could really go a far way to enable us to live in love and deepen our sense of oneness with each other and with God. The story is told about an anthropologist who proposed a game to the kids in an African village. He put a basket of fruit over a cross at a tree and told the kids that whoever got there first would win the sweet fruits. When he told them to run, something very strange happened. They all took each other's hands and they ran together. And so they arrived at the tree together, and they shared up the fruits, and they enjoyed them together. When he asked them why they had run like that, when anyone could have won the fruits for himself, they replied, Ubuntu, how can one of us be happy if all the other ones are sad? Ubuntu in Kosa culture means I am only because you are. Ubuntu is a way of life from which we can all learn. Origin originating from a South African philosophy, it encompasses all our aspirations about how to live life well together. 
We feel it when we connect with other people and share a collective sense of our humanity. When we listen deeply and experience emotional bonding. When we treat ourselves and other people with the dignity that they deserve. Think about when and where in your life you experience Ubuntu. And think about when you don't. Think about when you feel separate and it's them over there and us over here. Think about how we bond and how we separate. Okay? As I reflect, there is a great synergy and sense of Ubuntu taking place in the various groups that are charged with crafting the strategic plan for the Temple of Light. The road has been rocky at times, as most of us are navigating the process for the very first time. And it might seem that it's taking a long, long time. But, you know, to coin an old cliche, Rome was not built in a day. And the great oak started from a tiny acorn. And so we have to allow the process. We have been slowly peeling away the layers of our frustration and discomfort. And some amazing results are emerging. This is because we're doing it in community. And we're holding hands as we run towards our goal as one. The question, therefore, is how can we more truly experience this powerful sense of community and oneness grounded in Ubuntu? We do this through some practices that sound very much like the science of mind to me. These are laid out in, um, in the book, Everyday Ubuntu. So I'm going to just share with you some of the ways that Mungi Ingumani offers in her book. She says, one, see yourself in other people. As we do this, our experience in the world will inevitably be a richer, kinder, and more connected one. If we look at others and see ourselves reflected back, we inevitably treat people better. We need to connect mindfully with strangers. We need to notice the judgments that we have. We need to feel them, recognize them, acknowledge them, and then let them go. Ask yourself, what are you going to do to enable the community around you to improve? You could ask yourself that question of your presence in the Temple of Light. Time is one of the most precious gifts that you can give. Human bonds are created by offering your time. Third thing, put yourself in the shoes of others. Now, I remember when um, the, the former chair gifted me with this book. I told her that I admired her shoes, but I was going to, to wear my own. So this is a, a contrary idea. We need to be putting ourselves into other people's shoes. So even if we don't agree with their point of view, we need to consider that that is their point of view. Everyone has difficult things and different things going on in their lives that we know nothing about. Even people we think we are close to. This works well when you find yourself in conflict with someone or find yourself passing judgment. Close your eyes and imagine how they might be feeling about at that particular situation. Fourth thing, she says, have dignity and respect for yourself and others. Establish clear and respectful boundaries so that you can look after yourself and continue to give to others. Next thing, she says, believe in the goodness and greatness of everyone. When we choose to see the good or bad in someone, Whatever we decide is often reflected back to us. If we find ourselves criticizing someone for doing a particular thing, we are unconsciously judging ourselves because it's probably something that we do. Seven, seek out ways, she says, to connect with others. Now, this has become even more important now that um, pandemic, pandemic protocols require that we practice physical distancing. We call it physical distancing, because socially we are still together. 
It has been hard for many of us to maintain these imposed boundaries. For example, <laughs> uh, I'll share a personal experience. The day before New Year's Eve, a very, very close friend of mine visited. When she arrived, she was wearing a mask. So she came in and uh, we sat six feet apart and she, we, we had cake and we had wine and we chatted for about two hours. And then she got up to leave. I walked her to the gate and spontaneously we hugged. It just happened naturally. A week later, she called me to tell me that she had tested positive for COVID-19. I took a deep breath. I was feeling fine, but my head started to swirl. We hugged, suppose, if, but what, you know. All those thoughts came into my mind. I went into prayer and I quarantined myself. I didn't test, uh, but she and I kept in touch. She lost her, her taste and her sense of smell, but she was, for the most part, well. I felt nothing, and I just kept far from my family members, and I told them to stay far from me. And uh, a week after that, she called to say that she had tested again, and she was COVID-free. So it's just the natural thing for us to do is to be together. We want to be together. We want to connect. We want to hug. We, we, this is who we are as a people. We love to do that. And so this is now contrary to our way of being, to be distant and separate. We can't shake hands. We can't hug. We can't touch. And after church, we can't gather underneath the neem tree to drink coffee and chat and catch up. Okay? So... We need to shift the way we engage with our friends. Cre um, make a phone call. Call to say hi. Have a Zoom party. We can do Zoom for 45 minutes. And some of us have decided to pay for subscriptions to Zoom so that we can have more long, um, you know, longer connections with our friends and our business associates. Okay? So another thing, put a birthday up on your phone. I've been meaning to do it for a long time. Every year I transfer the names in my diary, and that is tedious. So I invite someone who knows how to do it. I have an Android phone to, to, to show me how. I would really, really appreciate that. So I'm asking for help. And Gomani urges us to embrace the F word, forgiveness, which can give us back, she says, our self-respect and dignity the spirit of Ubuntu teaches that it is not good to sit alone with the pain of bitterness. Forgiveness returns peace of mind to the person who is angered and brings peace to all our lives. Friends, the truth is that relationships were designed to enable us to learn how to love others more, more purely. Think of the relationships that you have with family with friends, with loved ones, with spouses. I want you to think of one relationship that's probably not working or not working as well as you'd like. Just close your eyes and think of that relationship for a minute. It's not working. There's some dissonance. Maybe not working as well as you'd like. Take a deep breath. And I want you to think about one thing, one thing that you could do differently, that one thing that's grounded in love, forgiveness, reaching out, listening, engaging, connecting. What is, it, what is one thing that you can do? Even listening, just listen, hold your point of view for a while and just listen and just see the difference it could make to the quality of that relationship. And if you choose, you can call me and let me know how it goes. And so we, we need to just, as we love people in relationship, one of the things that we can do is to just allow them to be. 
allow them to be who they are. Because remember, we're all created in the image and likeness of God. We may not like their behavior, but they're all as we are. We are all one. There's some aspect of them that is reflecting in, um, that is a reflection of who we are. It says that the, the ego seeks intimacy through control and guilt, whereas love seeks intimacy through acceptance and release. Relationships are meaningful because they bring opportunities for us to expand our hearts and become more deeply loving. Nothing stands between a baby's natural impulse to love and her expression of that love because she hasn't yet learned that there are people out there that you can't trust, that the world is unsafe. She hasn't learned that. A committed spiritual practice enables us to come into the realization of our oneness with God in whom we live and move and have our being. Meditation and affirmative prayer enables us to become more aware of a deeper sense of the unity of all life and our and our sense of oneness with spirit. spirit. And as our declaration of the principle says, the highest, the highest God, God and the innermost, innermost God are one, one God. By letting, By letting go of the sense of I, I and me I and I mine, we allow the mind and the heart to be fully open to the truth that we all are one. This realization leads us to an understanding that everything you do, you do for yourself. Every behavior and every relationship is about yourself. It behooves us then to remember that love is a conscious decision to foster the spiritual growth of another. In doing so, we experience the greatest relationship of all, and it is the relationship we have with God. This is what spiritual union is all about. In spiritual community, we share and support each other in our spiritual growth, as each of us commonly seeks a deeper understanding and demonstration of the universal principles of divine unity, the principles of Ubuntu. And so, at the end of the day, true relationship doesn't rely exclusively on time or space or on external outward expression. True relationship rel relies on a deep sense of our oneness and our union with the one through our connectedness with humanity and the knowing that God in me is unified with God in all. Can we say that together? God in me, let me say it one more time. God in me is unified with God in all. Together. God in me is unified with God in all. Um, make, make eye contact with somebody else in the room and say, God in me is unified with God in you. God in me is unified with the God in you. God in me is unified with the God in you. Okay. I invite you to spend some time this week reaching out to a few of the friends that you haven't been in touch with for a while. Just call them up, you know, give them a WhatsApp message and just say hi, thinking of you, miss you, how you doing, what's happening? And listen, just listen and hear what they're saying. As you connect, commit to just being present in that conversation, right? Listen to their, their feelings, listen to their un, maybe unstated messages outside of the words that they're speaking. So practice deep listening and un understand the, 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 the why, the, the feelings behind the words. Get to their point of view, understand their point of view, and get a sense of where they are coming from. Offer to do something special for them. Go and get their groceries or pick up something for them. Take their stuff to the cleaners. Of course, you know, we make sure we practice the protocols. But just reach out and do something special for someone that you think is special. Or maybe just do something nice for a stranger. In the supermarket the other day, I saw a woman counting pennies as she was getting some stuff for herself. I had just checked out, and I just said to the cashier, 
I just nodded and the cashier understood. And when, <laughs> when she realized that her stuff was paid for, she said, Lord, thank you, God, thank you. Well, what's your name, miss? I hesitated. And she said, it's all right, I know. I'm going to call you Angel. So, and that felt good. So as, as, as I've heard it say, pay it forward. See how you can just reach out to, to touch, to move, to inspire, to, to, to bless, to heal, to uplift someone else. And that, you know, that is a full experience of Ubuntu. I will leave you with some excerpts from a meditation by Dr. Ernest Holmes. And, and he's writing, it, it comes from Living the Science of Mind. I am one with God. I am one with all people. I am one with all life. I am one with everything that lives. And knowing that I am one, I acknowledge that there is a silent power flowing through us all, blessing, healing, and prospering each and every one of us. I enter into the joy of living in love and harmony with all, in divine relationship and full cooperation. In every moment, something within me reaches out and embraces the whole world, blessing everything it touches and bringing life, happiness, and joy to everyone. Friends, may the spirit of Ubuntu be with you in every action and interaction that you have this week. Truly, the Christ in me salutes the Christ in you. Namaste.